Hi, I'm Ben from Teleport, and today I'm going to be reviewing how you can use Teleport to give you better visibility into access and auditing of Kubernetes access. Teleport is a unified access plane that allows engineers access to unified access to servers, Kubernetes, web applications, and databases. In this video, we'll cover how to use Teleport to provide access to Kubernetes and how to monitor and graph that activity using the Elk stack. The Elk stack stands for a collection of open source solutions, which is Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana. And once set up, you'll have a real-time view of who's accessing your cluster and what are they doing. So why would you want to do this? Kubernetes already provides a very robust audit log, but at scale, it has two important blind spots. To start off with, you may have service accounts which you share to a team, but you can't map these to SSO identities. Teleport provides the mapping between a user who logs in, their SSO identity, and which service account they're logging in as. The second blind spot is when teams are using kubectl execs, they'll be accessing pods, but you may not know what exactly they're doing on those pods. I'm going to show you what it's like for the end user. So I'm going to log into Teleport. And I'm connecting to a proxy, and I'm using the SSO provider GitHub. This has opened up a browser window, and since I'm already authenticated, it has logged me in. There's a few bits of key information here. We have Kubernetes enabled, and we have a cluster group, which is a GCP cluster. I'm using uh, TSH cube LS to show that I have one cluster connected, and I'm currently logged into it. So what this has done on the background is it's gone out to Teleport. It's checked my credentials against GitHub. And it's issued me a 12-hour certificate for access to this Kubernetes cluster. Now I can just use the same tools that I've already used to uh, and just use kubectl. Here I am just making sure that I have the right current context. And this is the name of my uh, demo cluster. So now I can just use kubectl as I would normally. I'm going to exec into a pod and see what's in here. So you can see now I'm now connected as root on this GKE cluster. Uh, I have a few entry points here, see if we have anything installed. I'm just going to do a go hello world. And um, we're going to exit. OK, so now I've completed my access to the pod, and we can go into Teleport itself. Teleport comes with this proxy UI, um, which you can get access to the same audit log capabilities. So here we have servers, but we're not interested in this. We're just interested in our Kubernetes access. And you can see here that we have some Kubernetes requests, some session data, session has been started. And the second blind spot that I talked about, you can see here that we have a recorded session of what happened during the last uh, kubectl exec. Where I've kind of logged in, the command wasn't found, and I did echo hello world. So let's go back to the audit log, and you can see that we have a range of other activity here that's happened on this cluster. In my case, I'm using Teleport on a single instance, and I'm writing to the file system. FluentD is great in this scenario in which it just picks up these logs and will forward it to my Elk stack. In my setup, I'm using AWS's open distro to run and host everything for me. So I'm going to show you what this looks like. So we have a source destination. Uh, it's tailing teleport logs. There's an ES here, which is important. I'll come back to this. And it's just everything under uh, slash logs star.log. This POS file is used for Fluentd's internal state. It's highly recommended that you run this. And I pass the JSON time string logs. And so here we have a match ES. And so this ES is for uh, Elasticsearch service. And it's capturing everything which has this ES tag. Uh, it's log stack format. Uh, it's one minute, one second interval for flushing. And the endpoint here is a uh, endpoint I got when I configured Elasticsearch on AWS in US West 2. And the rest are my secrets. There's some more detailed instructions of how to configure IAM roles and an extreme role for this host. But to keep it simple, I've just used the access key and secret. 
So now this has been configured um, in my example Kibana. Um, it's very helpful to use this discover tab and this can show you all of the logs that are coming in. And so you can uh, come in here, to see the last 14 days. And so you can see over the, um, just on Friday, I configure this, and then there's been more activity um, this start of this week. And in here, you can see each individual ones of these. You can see which data has come in, and you can see the full JSON output. So now we have all of these logs in here. The next thing you want to do is use Kibana to create a dashboard. In my example, I've already created a dashboard here. And this lets you slice and dice all of the um, audit logs that have come in. So um, we, I have a few examples here um, that might be useful for you. Um, so you know you can create a table that counts all of the remote IP addresses of people accessing systems. You can create a pie chart of what type of requests are being made. You can see who accessed the system the most. In my case, it's been myself. And so. Um, this is a great tool to quickly at a glance see what's happening to your Kubernetes cluster access. This brings me to the end of my video of how you can use Teleport to provide access to Kubernetes clusters linking to SSO identities, forwarding those logs uh, using FluentD to an Elk stack. And in my next video, I hope to do a deep dive into how you can alert and receive updates of suspicious behavior. Thank you.